OCS262 students. The purpose of this video is to talk to you about text I.O. And input output, as you know, refers to any process that brings data into or out of a program. And it's worth reflecting on what I.O. we have studied so far. And we've used scanner to get input into a program. And we've used various methods in system.out to provide output. What are the limitations of that I.O.? And what other kinds of I.O. are possible? So I'll let you think about that for a moment. And once you've thought about that, so hit pause, think about those two questions. And once you have an answer, hit play. All right, so the main problem with output is the output that we've got right now is ephemeral. Um, if we provide output, it goes into the terminal. And once that terminal is closed, whatever, you know, you're using a console, maybe in Visual Studio Code, but once that's closed, that output is lost. So any data that you have um, produced is not uh, available to you. Also, of course, any data that's sitting in memory, if you've got objects that are part of a, a running program, as soon as the program finishes, all those objects go away. So there's nothing permanent. Input? Well, input by hand is tedious, and we have no way of handling non-text-based data. You can't, at the keyboard, type in an image. Certainly not easily. The solution is to use files. Now, you know, of course, about a file on a file system. Java provides a class that represents one of those files, and it's appropriately enough called file. So. Uh, I assume that all of you are familiar with these concepts. An absolute file name starts at the root level of a file system and it starts with a slash. And then we have what's known as a current working directory. That's the directory that you are currently in. And then from the current working directory, you can have relative file paths and relative file names. So um, a relative file name does not start with a slash and it is always relative to your current working directory. Now, for our purposes, we're going to be working in Visual Studio Code for, for our Java programs, and the root level of the project is always our, our current working directory. So, for instance, I have a project here called File IO Demo, and it has the source directory, as you would expect. There's some other directories here as well, docs, lib, notes, and bin, and if I put testing.text right here at the root level, notice that these all sort of line up here, at the root level of the project, then I can simply refer to it as testing.text. .text. Um, we always want to use relative uh, file names. We can't use absolute file names. You know, sometimes I'll have a student turn in a, a file that starts off with C colon backslash. That's not going to end well because I don't have a C drive. So what is in the file class? So we can look at the API for it, and we can see that there are a number of fairly interesting uh, constructors and methods in it. Um, so if you want to make a file, you can provide a... The easiest way to do it is simply provide a path name as a string. Obviously, this is all UML. You can see whether or not a file exists, whether you can read from it, write to it, whether or not that file is a directory, uh, whether or not it's a file whether it is absolute, meaning it's an absolute file path, starting with a slash, whether it's hidden. And you can get an absolute path and a few other things as well. You can find out how long a file is, how many bytes it is. Um, and if your file happens to be a directory, list file will actually, uh, I believe this is a typo, it should be list files. List files will list all of the uh, folders within the, your, your current working directory. You can delete a file and you can rename a file. Uh, interestingly, when you say rename, you don't just give it a string, you have to give it another file. And Boolean uh, returns true if it succeeded, false otherwise. You can also make directory, a directory, or you can make directories. So there's quite a lot that you can do with file. Uh, and I think most of these are self-evident. So uh, here's an example of a, uh, a running program. I'm just going to go ahead and well, actually we'll just, we'll just sort of stick with it um, right here. So oops, let's see here. Move this out of the way. There we go. So uh, I'm creating a file here 
And I'm running this from, uh, I'm assuming um, that, it's, that it's running uh, within this Visual Studio Code project. And so you can see docs, text, fiction, fict1.txt. If we open up docs, and if we open up texts, and if we open up fiction, we find fict1.txt. And yeah, let's go ahead and run this just so we can see what it looks like. So if I go ahead and run this now, let's see, uh, F5 ought to do it. And we can see the output right here. Um, let's see, does it exist? True, it does. We just, we just saw it right here, um, fict1.txt. And it has 800, it's 850 bytes long. Can it be read? Yes. Can it be written? True. Is it a directory? No, it is not. It's just a file. Is it as a file? True. Is it absolute? No, it is a rel we provided a relative path. Is it hidden? Nope, we can see it. And we give the absolute uh, path to it right there. So those are the sort of things you can discover using file. It may seem a little strange to you that we just asked whether or not a file is a file. So. In most file systems, a file is anything on the file system, including directories. Directories are just special files that can contain other files. So, uh, but in our case, it's, a, it's just an ordinary text file. There's no structure to it, and therefore it is a file, not a directory. This shows roughly the same thing. Now we're just, our new file is just called docs. And of course, this is a directory, and so we can see that that is the case as well. You notice that when we, uh, when we look at a file and we ask for the list of files from a file, since docs contains uh, images and texts and doc1 and doc2.txt, these are the things that get displayed. We don't see a recursive uh, diving into images, so we don't see what's in images image1 and image2.png, we don't see what's in text, so we don't sort of plunge into these um, subdirectories. Now, there may be a way to do that, and we can, we can find out by just looking at the API. The thing about a file is a file just represents an object on the file system, and it has no methods for writing or reading. I mean, if you take a look at the API, and if you look at what it can do, you can, it asks, can you read? Can you write? How long is something? Uh, can, you can delete it. Um, but generally speaking, you can't write. The only thing you really can do is there is make dir. So you can make a directory if you're already in a directory. But otherwise, you can't simply write content to a file. And so that's what we want to talk about right now. So there are two concepts that we need to be aware of. Uh, the concept of streams. And since you're living in Wisconsin, you're probably already familiar with streams, except the streams that you're used to carry uh, water. The streams that we're going to be talking about here carry data, carry binary data. And we can talk about an input stream. An input stream flows into a program. An output stream flows out of a program. And in both cases, we have what is known as the source uh, for an input stream. So an input stream has to come from somewhere and a, an output stream has to have a destination, sometimes called a sink, where, you, where the data goes to. We'll just always call it a destination. The stream can be carrying text data, that's ASCII characters that you're used to, or it can be carrying binary data, like the sort of data that comprises a video or a PNG file. Um, we can also uh, the, the source might be from the web, the destination might be to the web. So we have the ability to write to various locations and the, the basic structure of the programs does not change just because you've changed your, uh, your destination. So let us introduce our first class that can do a file output. It is known as PrintWriter. So PrintWriter is used to create a file and write data to it. And this is gonna be text-based data. And the fact that it's called a print writer is a, is a tip off. So first, how do you do this? Well, you have to create a print writer. You can either provide it with just the name of a file. This also could be a relative or an absolute path, but it, the point is it's a string, or you can give it a file and a file takes a string, but the two of these are equivalent. 
And then once you've got your print writer, you can use print, printlin, printf, and so forth. The point is, when you use P, let's say we call this PW and you said PW.print, you're not going to see anything on the console. You're not going to see anything in Visual Studio Code, except maybe if you're looking at your Explorer, then you're going to see these files appear. So it's pretty magical. This is how we can create files. Um, if a file doesn't exist, it's going to be created for you first. That is to say a file on the file system. If the file does exist, it's going to be overwritten. And one question we might ask ourselves is how do we prevent that from happening? Because often we'll want to write some data and then we'll want to append rather than just wipe out the data that was previously in a file. So let's take a look at an example. So I'm creating a print writer here and I'm using printlin, printf, printlin, print, print, and close. Now you might just decide to pick one of these print methods. Uh, I'm using all of them just to sort of show off the power here. Uh, this won't compile because PrintWriter throws a file not found exception. And as you recall from your study of exceptions, this is a what type of exception? Correct. It is a checked exception. So we have two ways to handle it. What are the ways for handling it? Correct. Boy, you're really doing well, student who's hopefully watching this. Um, one way to do it is to put it in a try catch block. And that's where we try something and we catch the uh, uh, any exception that gets thrown and we also have our finally block. Notice that we're going to create the print writer here. We're going to do what we want to and then in finally we close. Remember that finally is guaranteed to execute it sometime in the future. Um, we did talk about the idea of not wanting to, to catch. If we throw something we don't want to catch it at the same time but we might if if we're doing some output and we discover that the file is, boy, so here's an interesting question. How could this possibly fail? Well, it might fail because we don't have the right permissions. Uh, maybe you're trying, your, your current working directory is not a directory that you have right access to. So there are a number of reasons it could fail and we would want to examine, we might use e.getMessage. In this case, I'm using e.printStackTrace to see what's going on. So here's a better way of doing this. This is a try catch block, but it is a try with resources. And a resource is, is something that you need to use, your program needs to use, and you can uh, get it to close automatically. So you don't want all these resources open all the time because they simply chew up too many resources. So here's an example where we go ahead and we have try, and then we have catch. We do not say pw.close. Uh, we don't need to because of the fact that this will happen automatically. We had asked the question, what if we wanted to append? In other words, if we executed some code and then we executed some more code, we don't want stuff to wipe out. Um, in that case, we would use a file output stream. Let me give you a quick demonstration to, to sort of illustrate what I'm talking about here. Okay. So here we have demo PW. You'll notice that right now I'm going to be writing testing.txt and you will see that testing.txt does not exist at the root level of the project. When I run this, we have build failed. No, there will be a brief pause here while I figure out what went wrong. Uh, looks like I am missing a curly bracket. And so we'll just go ahead and then add one of those. And now this time for sure. All right, so you can see that testing.txt appeared. Let's just take a look at that and you can see, uh, let's see, I really want this down here so I can see the program at the same time. Good enough. All right, so there's our, there's our program. Now, I'm gonna change this. So I'm gonna say, I think therefore I am happy and Let's see what happens when we, when we run this program again. So when we pr run the program again, it just wiped out the current contents. I, I think therefore I'm happy. Pi is approximately this uh, 42. Let me change this to 28. Let me show you that there's no funny stuff going on here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And you can see everything just changed. Now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use a file output stream. And so, 
we're going to create a new file output stream using testing.txt and we are going to say uh, we're going to say true here so that means that we are going to be appending and let's see visual studio code always throws in these parentheses at the most awkward time and let's see what's it complaining about now um there will be a brief pause here while i figure out what it's complaining about no problem i was just missing a parenthesis often happens and so when i run this now let's see what's going to happen here uh, so we've got five lines here right now i run the program and we have uh, we've added some more. Uh, we didn't add 10 because I didn't have a, the, the very last true ended without a new line character. So I think therefore I'm happy just, just uh, showed up there. And if I run this one more time, then we can see that it's just going to keep, the file is just going to keep growing. We are appending because of this. And we can't do this with uh, print writer directly. We have to use a, uh, an argument to print the print writer constructor, which is a file output stream, because file output streams give you the ability to uh, choose whether or not you plan to append or replace the contents. If I were to change this to false now and run it, then watch closely. We've got all those lines there and not anymore. So every time we run this now with this being set to false, we're simply going to replace.